Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Alright, well, while I wait for my stuff to arrive, I thought I'd do a video on my Tesla coil. Or Slayer Exciter. Not Slayer Exciter, actually, but, you know. So, anyway, I've wound an entirely new secondary for it. Just this here, and I've wrapped it in plumber's tape for the primary, just some ordinary cable, and this only requires three components. We've got a transistor here, which is a BD140, three kilo ohm resistor, and a green LED, and for the top load, just a couple of um, cake tins put together. The cakes that are in there are now in a much better place, in other words, my stomach. So let's just see if this thing works. I'm running it on 24 volts, the little LED has come on. You can do the usual stuff. A little light there. Actually getting some streamers coming off the wire. Just let me turn the lights off so you can see this better. There's very little sunlight remaining. Just look at that. It's like magic, isn't it? Of course, the trick with the incandescent light bulb works with this as well. It's lighting up already. It doesn't even need to touch it, just needs to be near it. Let's just zoom up on that. I hope this won't interfere with the camera. Lots and lots of plasma off that. Can achieve a similar effect with a bulb with frosted glass, although it's not not as spectacular. Although I can see a projection of the filament on there. Can you see that? Looks like there's a spider in there. I'm not going to touch the, that, uh, that top load because if I do, that's going to give me a pretty nasty burn. I've already got an RF burn off this thing. I don't particularly want another one. As you can tell, there's some high voltage there. Mm, there goes part of my top load. Okay, now I'm going to try to find out what the frequency is. And I've got my scope connected to this piece of wire here. With another piece of wire connected there. So it's just basically a very crude antenna. So I'm going to turn the thing on now. And let's see what we, let's see, what we see on the scope. Okay, that's coming in good and strong. So there's our waveform. Nice sine wave there, actually. I'm surprised at how clean that is. Well, according to this little basic program that I've written, it's 476 kilohertz. Not too bad. Of course, that's with the top load on. And now I'm going to try it with the top load off, and we'll see what we get. Well, I guess I over-experimented a little bit. I've, I've done melted me breakout point. And now when I turn it on, we have problems. It's arcing through the thing. And it's smoking. That's the trouble when it starts getting all charred and carbonized. Starts getting conductive. And this happens. Mmm, burnt cardboard. It's still glowing actually. Let's see if I can make this thing catch fire. Maybe that's not a good idea, actually. Okay, here we are after the surgery. Clipped off the top where it was all charred and burnt, so it shouldn't arc over anymore. I don't know if you can see, but along the uh, tape there that I've put around the edge, 
It's got little holes in it. I reckon. I reckon while this was falling down, it arced to that, arced through the tape, and that's why them holes are there. Anyway, I'm just going to give this a quick power on and power off to make sure that there is no corona where I don't want it. And I'll do some more experiments. if the stupid camera would actually focus. Not going to do that too long. I'm not going to do that for too long without a breakout point. But that seems to be working. Right. I have a breakout point now. Going to measure the frequency of that later and try to find out what it is. Now I found an interesting thing. I've got a second coil here, which is coated in tape, obviously, to keep it protected. If I put this right next to this coil, I actually get power out of this other coil, even though it's not connected to anything, it's just near this other one. Don't get any breakout from it, but there is power coming from it. I'll just zoom in closer to that so you can see more what I'm talking about. Of course, the camera's going to blur again, isn't it? You can see that it. I'm oh, getting a little arc off that. And the bottom of the coil will also do the same thing. That's pretty crazy. So I'm now going to measure the frequency of this coil with this one standing next to it and see what it is. So I'll just turn the scope. Um, I'll just turn it on. Okay, let's just increase that range a little bit. And according to this, the frequency is now 526 kilohertz. Might try an experiment with an AM radio if it gets up a little bit. If I, if I can, if it goes up a little bit higher. Okay, now I'm going to take this coil away. I'm just left with this. Turn it back on. And I'm going to measure on the scope. Okay. And we are about 609 kilohertz. Okay, so over here I've got a radio which I have tuned to the frequency of this. And I found out that if I move the coil, if I move the primary up a little bit, Get a much more stable arc at the top there. It's not all jumping about and everything. It's just there. So anyway, I'll turn the radio on now. So all you can hear is just static. Now I'll turn this on. Radio silence. Well. Mostly silence anyway. So I'll just zoom up on that so you can see. Strangely enough, I've had to tune this to just a little bit below 600 kilohertz to get it um, tuned to the thing. So, either this scale is out a bit, or my reading's out a bit. Probably the latter, to tell you the truth. Now, I've got an idea. 
if I vary the voltage on my power supply here, I can control the intensity of the plasma at the top there. Right now it's running on about 12 volts. It's up to about 24 volts, which is about as much as my homemade power supply can do. So I can vary the intensity of that. Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking audio modulation. That's at the maximum voltage. Just a little bit over 24 volts, but of course the camera's not going to focus on it. So if I can modulate this, if I can modulate the output of my power supply to modulate this here, might be able to transmit over AM radio. So let's give it a go. Success, everybody! Transmitting on AM radio with a freaking sellout Slayer Exciter. Let's just try to tune this a little better. this oh no, it's the first tape I came to and if we just adjust this to adjust the bias yeah you won't be hearing this on the radio I don't know if you heard that, but as I put my hand near it, the kind of messes up, detunes it a little bit. It's actually transmitting enough power to light up a bulb. No, I guess it isn't. But the fact that, you know, I managed to transmit on AM using this is actually pretty amazing. Now I'm going to put up a circuit of this so you can see how it's working. And here is the circuit. Got to remember that in my version, I've used PNP transistors because for some reason the NPNs just don't seem to last as long. They only seem to last about a few seconds and then they go. But with PNP transistors, I'm still using the original ones that I used at the beginning of this video. And they haven't failed yet, so yeah, that's uh, yeah. And of course you got to remember as it's using PMP transistors, it's going to be positive ground. Don't know if I've already said that, because I can't even remember what I did five seconds ago. Unfortunately, the circuit's not the most stable in the world, and as you heard, there is a bit of background noise, but I'm actually surprised it worked as well as it did. But anyway, yeah, that's the circuit. I also found, if I put a toroid, I mean, if I put a top load on it, that kind of helps to stabilise it a bit. But anyway, my battery's running out, so I've got to end this video. Well, I guess that's about it for this video. Anyway, this thing is starting to have some corona problems. Of course, because I've just started shooting the video, it seems to have stopped that. But we were getting a little bit coming out the side of the wire. And it's decided it's going to burn the... Oh, there we go. We can kind of see it now. Might just be able to see a little bit leaking out the side of the wire there. Which is not supposed to happen. It's eaten its way through the insulation already. Anyway, the fact the fact that I've managed to make this transmit on an AM radio pretty amazing actually. I've also put two transistors on the heatsink. Now they're both connected in parallel just to see if it will increase the output, but it's about the same. 
And that heat sink isn't even warm. Well, it's a little bit warm, but it's definitely not hot. And I've been running this for a little while now, about two minutes or so. It's barely warm. So what I think I'm going to do, the next coil I wind, I'm going to wind it on a plastic former instead of a cardboard former. That way it's not going to get charred and all carbonized. Anyway, that's just about it for now, so till next time, goodbye. See you next time, so until next time, goodbye. Must burn what is bad.